we ban Steve? No, no. absolutely. Yes. Big time. Yes. Big time. Yes. Yes. No, we should not ban Steve, and I'm very passionate about this. If you give me $20,000, I'll ban Steve from all my tournaments. Uh, I don't think we need to ban Steve because we didn't ban Bay One Smash 4. I think that all Steve players are carried in bad. <laughs> I love Minecraft! So there's Steve's and four Steve's in every top eight of every tournament ever? No. This, this, is, not, this is not a ban-worthy character. Steve, we gotta ban Steve. He's gonna kill this game. He's gonna ban. Where he's gonna get Steve banned. No matter what way it goes, we're having so much fun watching it because it's so ridiculous. Uh, no, no, Steve's fine. You guys are, are babies. Get the hell out of here. No, Steve's good and he's very funny. We need more funny characters. Steve's cool. Leave Steve alone. With COVID restrictions around the world starting to loosen up, the competitive Super Smash Bros. scene is starting to ramp back up. For Smash Ultimate, the return to in-person tournaments was especially welcome as the game was still fairly new when the pandemic started. Now, as the game approaches its fourth anniversary, players are finally beginning to be able to travel around the world and compete with each other in person once again. As a result, players have also begun fleshing out the competitive meta, as some DLC characters who were released during the pandemic were never properly tested in a tournament environment. Yeah, the pandemic playing online definitely was an interesting field to test the new DLC. I personally like picked the DLC up and tried them out. I did it before with Joker when we were offline and with Steve especially, I was like the best Steve for like a month. Um, I won like the first uh, juice box or whatever. Oh, we got missed! Oh, no, 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 oh, missed. missed! That's so scary! Okay, Aaron's gonna be able to get back to stage. Gotta... Oh, no, 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 no. That's, a, that's a juice box 17! Aaron will take it with Solo, Alex! Woo! Yeah, that was really interesting. I definitely wish I kept playing Steve, <laughs> but there was no way to tell back then how broken he was going to be. Very quickly, a couple of DLC characters stood out as being very strong. Characters like Min Min and Pyra and Mithra were popular even when tournaments were online. But now, two other DLC characters have become the center of attention. Tekken's Kazuya Mishima and It's just really uh, the way that Steve's kit works in general. You're forcing situations that no other character in the game can force. Nobody else has the ability to build and force you to uh, approach in such a weird way. Like, yeah, there's zoning, there's projectiles and whatnot, but this doesn't even really count as a projectile. It doesn't do any damage, it's just an obstruction. So now I have to get around this obstruction. And when I finally get around this obstruction, you have almost zero death combos. Steve is a very um, single player character in a multiplayer game. He sets up his walls which basically eliminate parts of the game. For instance, just the wall behind him and you can't really knock him back uh, horizontally or diagonally at all. So it's just, a, it's, a, it's a very specific game plan that people have to figure out. Uh, I think the issues with Kazi are just zero deaths. They actually aren't that, they aren't that hard. Um, especially in, on a stage like Final Destination with no platforms. Kazi has obviously have figured out things to do with platforms, like with the jab to store the, um, the down input so when they get on the platform they can do immediate uh, while, while standing punch. That's amazing, but not everybody does that. If we're on FD, I just have to do electrics into neutral airs into more electrics and then eventually up smash. And that's, you know, it's actually really easy. Like there's, there's, there's like, you know, as long as you know how to do an electric and you have good timing, you should be able to do that. So, and you have that crazy rage mechanic, which is a grab. And it's like, you know, more often than not, when people are afraid of like situations where they can die immediately, they're gonna shield and now you're just beating that. If you've been on Smash Twitter any time in the past couple of months, you've probably noticed an endless torrent of clips of Kazuya's and Steve's zero to deathing opponents and seemingly breaking the rules of Super Smash Bros. <laughs> As more and more Steve's make it deeper and deeper into brackets, calls from the community to ban the character are reaching a fever pitch. With key wins like Japanese player Akula at the Gimvitational and Onin at Gommel, Many feel that Steve is simply too strong of a character and needs to be banned sooner rather than later. Using Bayonetta in Smash 4 as an example of a character that completely ruined the game's meta. What's going on? What is this? While it's clear that Steve is a strong character, that doesn't mean he's unbeatable or necessarily ban-worthy. No, Steve should not be banned. And if anything, people will learn the matchup, even if the top players are really pessimistic about it. They definitely will learn the matchup and Steve will not be as good as he is right now, which I think he's top three right now, but he'll be lower into top 10 in like a year. With the results we're seeing from a lot of these characters, I can't really say that I, I, I think any of them deserve to be banned, um, but you know, results and play style are very different. So I think over time we'll see kind of how 
those numbers and those statistics really work together in terms of like how healthy it is for the meta. I think people's opinions of Steve and Kazuya uh, are like half warranted. I do think that like a lot of the community on our side would rather complain than lab. The thing is, you know, at some point in time in Melee, Shine was broken, right? Like, wow, that's, and it's still, you know, obviously a really good move, but everyone's like, wow, what do we do about that? And they just figured it out, you know, there's counterplay to everything. But with Ultimate in patches, and I think patch culture just in general has allowed people to like, rather just be upset and wait for a pal. I hope this gets patched out instead of trying to figure out how to play around it at the time. Uh, from my personal experience with Steve, I had a hard time with it at first, but then I really put myself through the matchup and now I feel like it's not so bad. It feels fine. Uh, it's hard for me to say if, like, if everybody else did that, they might feel the same way, or maybe everybody else is like, no, it's legitimate. Steve feels really, Ugh. Uh, and as for Kazuya, yeah, I think ICs do fairly well against the character in general, so I also don't feel that. So I, for me, it's hard to say, but I think uh, just uh, we need a bit more time. So far, the idea of counterpicking becoming the future of Smash Ultimate's meta has become a big point of conversation. And it's easy to see why. Top players like MKLeo, Tweak, and Zachary are all capable of playing multiple characters at the top level. And most recently, MKLeo pulled out the Rob against Proto Banham to try and beat Min Min at Double Down. Although some believe that players will need to pick up multiple characters to remain competitive in the near future, some still feel that sticking to your favorite character and pushing them as far as you can is the correct course of action. I think solo maining is still viable. There's so many ups to it. Um, like it, I find it personally, for me, very hard to adapt to a lot of different players' playstyles when I'm switching between characters. Uh, I, I can't really just like fully center myself and become 100% reactive and in tune with my character if I'm swapping around too much. But that being said, being able to rely on a couple specific things in a character to character matchup when you're counter picking is very, very nice. I think counter picking, if you can do it, on paper, it sounds great. It sounds like, hey, you just have a good matchup all the time, never have to play a bad matchup. But the downsides, you know, are kind of like the, the practicality aspect is like, okay, well now you have to keep all your characters really good. Some days characters aren't gonna feel good. You have to kind of figure out which one is feeling good that day. When you're playing a set and you start losing with a character, you're gonna have to think in the back of your head, like, oh, maybe I should, I'll go this character, I'll go this character. And I think long-term, I think you just don't progress as well if you're swapping characters all the time. As ice climbers, you know, I've been recently grinding my head against like Min Min's Belmonts. And I've been, I feel good in those matchups now. And now because of that, I, I kind of, I feel like a wall. So I think uh, counter picking, it kind of makes you end up feeling like you have full of holes, then maybe even more holes than like maybe a weaker character would give you. Last up, he's coming in heavy, good punish. To, oh, wait a minute. Wow, back there to Squall Hammer, that's so much damage. Yo, what? what? So while counterpicking may not be the ideal solution for everyone, it's clear that now is the time for players to put in the time to lab and prepare to face off against Kazuya and Steve at tournaments. At the end of the day, it's unlikely that we'll see a community-wide ban coming into effect. It's a contentious issue, and while some TOs may decide to ban the character from their tournaments, it's unlikely that everyone will follow suit. Even back during the days of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Meta Knight never saw a full community-wide ban despite being the unanimously agreed upon best character in the game. And considering that Steve currently isn't close to reaching the same level of power as Brawl Meta Knight, it's very unlikely that Steve will see a ban anytime soon. Feels like they don't stop, man. First there was a Cola at the Invitational, and now Onan at both Combo Breaker and here at Gommel. Michigan rushing the stage. They're so proud of their boy. And how could you not be, man? Yeah. Such a young and talented player, proving himself on a huge stage like this. Oh man! This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mav, Pachanas, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. As well as an extra special shout out to Steven, Gimbimbi, and Marco for being Diamond supporters. Thanks for your continued support. If you want to talk to us, check out our Discord. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.